a couple cultural issues that I don't know if were addressed. Did you talk about this, Dr. Anna? Just basically, uh, a large nose oftentimes is considered wisdom and wealth. It's a Chinese folkloric thought. I've actually, if you believe it or not, I've had some patients come to me and actually tell me this. This is what they're get, they wanted. And you've got to be careful when there may not be an aesthetic goal uh, in tandem with that. And then the opposite, which is a large nostril, is sometimes thought about as being something that will allow money to flood out of it. So you want to be very careful with showing nostrils. I'm going to tell you some surgical pearls that may keep you out of trouble because you may have an angry patient at the end. Um, aesthetics in terms of preserving ethnicity, it's really the catch word. If you want to be sensitive in talking to an Asian patient, if you start talking using the terms westernization, even African Americans and Hispanics, I think you're going to turn off a lot of people. So be very careful in the way that you address a patient. I think part of what I've heard a, a lecture a few years ago from Dr. Toriyumi has helped me frame sort of the uh, radix height of where I see things now. I really shoot for a more conservative nasal profile ending somewhere at the mid pupil rather than at the superciliary crease where I work more with the uh, Caucasian nose. The tip, there's a couple things, it's just being a little bit more conservative and pushing the tip so it's not too angulated. That's my aesthetic. I have hard times catering to all my patients' aesthetics. They come to me for a certain aesthetic that I have, and obviously I do make some accommodations, but I don't like things a little bit too westernized. Um, Strategies-wise, I've really moved away from solid silicone implants. These are some other alternatives, injectables that Dr. An did not uh, talk to you about as much, I'm going to talk about. And then the Gore-Tex and cartilage is very similar to his method, uh, with some maybe some minor modifications, but not much. The problem that I've had with silicone implants is that they're, it's very easy to do. You can do it in five minutes in the office, but they're, it's very hard. It's, the tip feels unnatural. And there is distal migration that's potentially possible even over the, a period of a few years. And I think that's a problem. I've had a much higher infection rate with it for some reason, but you can get infected with almost any material. Um, uh, a case that was done in Vietnam where I, this implant had actually extruded about a year or two before I s saw her. And then I just basically took out the depression, rebuilt it with Gore-Tex and then a tip graft. So the strategies, there's some things. I, I don't do fat injections for the nose. I, if I'm going to do a rhinoplasty, I'm going to do a rhinoplasty. But if a patient comes in for some facial rejuvenation using fat grafting techniques and they really don't care about too much of the nose, I will put some fat in the nose if I need to along the dorsum. There is a moderate retention. It's not a rhinoplasty result. And if you sell it as a rhinoplasty, I think you're way overstating it. The reason I do it also is to cover thin skin, inverted V deformities. And also with the Asian, you've got to be careful. As you augment the central face, you start washing out the nasal bridge, especially if you're focusing on the nasal jugal groove and um, augmenting that with fat. Um, as a Caucasian example, I just have this one because it's a sequential follow-up. This is about six weeks out after a fat graft facelift, 51-year-old. This is six months out. You can see that inverted V deformity from the previous rhinoplasty. And this is about 14 months out coming up, and that's just one fat treatment. It's not a perfect result. Clearly, there's still a little bit of depression in the radix, but there's a little bit of improvement. I didn't charge her anything for it. It took me less than 30 seconds to do, so I thought it was a nice little uh, adjunct to the procedure. Silicone injections, you've got to be very careful with. I've seen uh, mild augmentation. I've seen even uh, aggressive augmentation. Howard Tobin presented even full saddle deformities that he's corrected, and he's got about 35, 40 year history. I think a lot of times when you see silicone injections that look bad, it's usually due to bad technique and also impure products. But clearly, I don't, you know, this is an off label discussion. So be careful with that. I really use it for minor touch ups and finessing my primary work. Um, and also modifying contracted, contracted ailer rims. I think it's a wonderful thing, but just, again, be careful with uh, any advice I give you today. This is just a, a tip plasty with a very modest uh, dorsal augmentation using silicone droplets done over about three months, a total of about 0.3 cc's distributed over that time period. Um, strategies, radius injections, I really don't use anymore. I think people have gotten good success with that since I've got silicone. It's something that gives me more longevity to work with. But radius, I have used in the past. The 0.3 cc vial seems to work quite well for that. Um, I really have now, this become the mainstay of what I do, the Gore-Tex and cartilage tip grafting. And uh, I just think the Gore-Tex has a lot less issue from sliding down. It's, it, it, it feels much more natural. It doesn't shrink wrap as much as silicone. And um, this is the uh, contact information for the replacement for Gore-Tex. The technique is very similar to what Dr. An uses. I prefer the SAM sheets because they're a little bit smoother, in my opinion, than a block. But I have used the block before as well. I crimp the edges, and I make a little target point that sits between the medial crura. The tip adjustments, I really pretty similarly use either an onlay graft or a shield, depending on what I'm trying to achieve. 
And so it may be some, of, some redundant, redundancy here, so I'm going to move pretty quickly through this. The only caveat I would have for you is if they've got a pretty wide ALR base, be careful with the standard dome binding suture because the rotation that you're looking at from a side view can actually flare more nostril show. So just be careful what you're doing with the dome binding suture. I have, I've had that. I'm going to show you a patient who's still happy, but I'm not particularly fond of my result. When you're working with uh, the, the premaxilla, remember there can be a deficiency there. I use morselized cartilage for that area. I, don't, I tried silicone blocks, but they really feel weird when you smile. So be careful with extended blocks that go across that area. And finally, when you're working with the Ehler base, uh, the other uh, caveat I would have you think about is uh, not really doing a full cut through because there's a potential notching at this area where the sill is distorted. So I do a sill reduction and a sheen flap based on what I need to do. So in other words, just not doing two separate flaps where you're leaving a bridge of skin between the two. Um, and this is just re repeating some of those issues. I have not had success with the uh, cinch suture that goes across. I found after a few months that just relaxes. If you've got great success, I'm not here to tell you otherwise. I just haven't had much success with that at all. I use a crimp SAM sheet with a target at the end that's going to be ensconced between the, uh, the medial crura, excuse me, not the medial crura, the lateral crura coming upwards. Uh, again, just the book that I wrote with Dr. McCurdy that came out, that came out in Korean about a year ago or so. And just some concluding thoughts, remember some of the cultural issues that you may want to delve into that may be prevalent in people that have just uh, immigrated here. And I really think today, if you're looking at developments, there's really been an impetus toward cortex and cartilage as being the mainstay, although autogenous is obviously a, a wonderful alternative. And I do, I do use silicone microdroplets as touch-ups, many people don't. And uh, just be careful of the dome binding suture due to some of those issues. And I would, uh, would encourage you to think about the mid-pupil being a great starting point for the majority of patients, Asian patients, in terms of a more conservative uh, eth uh, profile. Uh, there's my email again if you need to reach me. Thank you very much.